product provided by 10 tons. Tennis in the Face is a mobile port of the game by the same name. It's an Angry Birds style game where you've got to swipe your tennis balls to bounce them off walls and kill all the cops. It's got a goofy wacky style to it and never takes itself too seriously. But could that be its major downfall? What's up guys, it's Thomas on the Switch Stop here to talk about Tennis in the Face by 10 Tons. This game is interesting to say the least. As you heard when I started off, it is a mobile port. And normally when reviewing games that have been ported over from mobile, I would never start with the fact that it's a mobile port. But we need to get this out of the way first. This game is clearly a mobile port. If I didn't know it was from iOS originally, I would still be able to know, and that's not really a good thing. However, iPhone games can still be fun, we know this. So how is it? Well, Tennis in the Face is an Angry Birds style game, as I said, which relies heavily on its fun physics and interesting level design to say the least. However, I feel that the gameplay doesn't vary enough and it just gets kind of repetitive, boring, and just downright not fun. I'm showing you only gameplay from the first three worlds, so take that in mind when you're watching this. There are many more variations down the line, such as new objects to throw, new items to interact with, but there's nothing really game changing. and everything just becomes this monotonous groove of go through a level, complete it, maybe get the achievement, the special achievement if that's what you're going for, but just keep on going and it never stops. Now doing something really repetitive like tennis in the face isn't inherently a bad thing. In fact, having something repetitive can be really fun in gaming, however the thing that you're doing that is repetitive has to be a blast in order for it to work and I'm unfortunately not able to say that about Tennis in the Face. I never really felt like I had too much control in Tennis in the Face. What makes games sort of like this such as Cut the Rope and Angry Birds so fun is that they have strategies and they're meant to be played in quick short bursts but Tennis in the Face I never felt in control. Sure, there were level designs that kind of prompted me to go one way, bounce something off a wall, and then hit another corner, which sends me this way, but it rarely ever worked out, and sometimes it seemed like the level designs were contradicting themselves. As you can see here, it clearly wants me to bounce it off this corner, bounce it up to that corner, and go over and kill the bad guy. So when I do that, there, there's a ledge in my way. Add on top of that, that it seems like the level choice just wasn't really thought about. Look at this. This is a level from the first world. It took me a while to beat. It was a pretty hard level. But then look at this. This is a level in the second world. What the hell was that? But occasionally bad level design and occasionally bad level placement are just that. Occasional. The game can still be fun if the base mechanics are fun. And that's where Tennis in the Face is pretty good actually. It's satisfying to hit one of the bad guys, however its one major downfall is that I never feel like I'm in control once again. I tried to like do a strategic bounce off shot right here, you can see, but it didn't work. But because Tennis in the Face's physics are just kind of all over the place, Turns out I hit him anyway, and I got rewarded for something I didn't really try and do. Which granted it makes for this kinda cool highlight, but is that really something you want out of a game? So far I've been pretty hard on this game, and well, while I think that is deserved, this game does do a lot of things right. If you are a fan of this genre, the sort of physics, bouncy, target hitting genre, I don't know what the official name is, then you will like Tennis in the Face. If you don't mind doing the same thing repetitive over and over again, then I bet you will like this game. 
There are a lot of levels spread across different worlds that all have different enemies, but that's really it. You encounter new mechanics along the way, but none of them really change the game. There are also special levels that don't really count in a world. However, unlike post-game levels like you would think they are, they just unlock when getting into the third world and they're just there for you to play. It's odd and it would have been awesome if maybe they added them into maybe just a new world or even like a post-game world because it just seems weird. I didn't have to beat the game or the subsequent world to unlock these. As soon as you get to the space in the overworld map, they're there. But as I said, if you like this style of game, you will like Tennis in the Face. There's a lot of content here, including those 30 extra weird levels, all of which can be completed multiple times for achievements and all that stuff. However, even if you would love this game, I can't recommend it to you on Switch because of one major thing the price. This game is $5. I, I, don't, I don't get how that makes any sort of sense. This game feels like a 99 cent mobile game and I, I, it hurts me to say that because I had fun with this game, I really did. There were just a couple of major problems that don't feel like something made for a console would have. However, obviously this wasn't made for a console, it was made for your phone. If you would really like this game, get the mobile version. It's $3 of, as opposed to the 5 and I feel like it's a superior version because as far as I can tell, it has all the same content which is on a portable thing and I know the Switch is portable but like your phone is always with you, you don't take your Switch with you wherever you go. So I cannot recommend the Switch version unless it either has a price drop or goes on sale for $1.99 or less. However, I'm just some random kid reviewing this game. I don't know you. If you think you would really like this game, then get this game. I'm not going to be the one to say don't. I'm just warning you that there are a couple of problems with it, and while I did have fun, I feel like the mobile version is definitely the way to go if you are looking to buy this game. If you want my opinion on a far superior, way cheaper mobile game, Kid Trip, click on the screen right now. I'm Thomas from the Switch Stop. Signing off.